welcome you all to Trek Wars. So today on Trek Wars, we're going to be looking at the Klingon Federation War that took place because of the Dominion, when the Federation sided with the Cardassians. Because we all know that was a good idea. With that being said, though, let's look at the big guns of some of our races that were involved in that conflict. So we'll be taking a look at the Cardassians, we'll be taking a look about the Klingons, and obviously the Federation. We'll find out what all the information we can about their logistics. And their big guns. It's all about big guns. Alright, so the Dominion and the Ramians won't be in this. We'll be looking at the Kelton class. We'll be looking at the Galore. And then of course, we'll throw in the good old Hadiki. And with that being said, let's get started. Alright, so we look at the big gun of the Galore, and it looks like it can deliver 585 terawatts of damage. And we look at the Kelton class, it looks like the Kelton can deliver 780,000 terawatts of damage. And the little Hideki is only bringing 97,500 terawatts of damage. So that's pretty interesting. So we can, by looking at this, we can see that Hideki is far behind its counterparts. And you can see that there's really a slight increase when it comes to the Kelton. So uh, it's, it's my speculation that the reason the Kelton can fire at a better rate than would say the Galore is probably because it probably has some kind of additional power source um, in some of the modules that's giving it a little bit more juice. All right, so looking at the Galar, you see it can fire nine times at 65,000. So that's a pretty uh, decent fire rate, so that's a good weapon. You can see that ship can do a lot of damage to capital-class ships. And then the Kelton is just slightly better with a little more juice. Now, the Hideki is falling far behind. Its fire rate is very low. Its uh, weapon output is, is uh, a medium, but its volley rate is very poor. So this ship is not going to do a whole lot against capital class ships. Um, its primary function is to defend larger ships from smaller craft. It's not meant to engage larger ships. And then we can obviously see this by its uh, performance when we watch this ship. It never seems to really do much of anything. It just becomes more or less fodder for Deep Space Nine. It's kind of like a weaker version of the Jim Hadar fighter. It doesn't. It doesn't really do much of anything. I speculate it might have a good firing control system, but I think that's about all it's worth. Okay. So next, we'll take a look at obviously some of the Federation ships that was in the conflict with the Federation clean on war. So we know that, that what the Cardassians were doing, and so let's we'll kind of look and see what the Federation has. So the Federation these ships are going to be the Excelsior is going to be two hundred sixty thousand. Um, terawatts of damage and then the Miranda is 165,000 and then the obviously the Galaxy class is bringing 910,000 terawatts of damage which is a significant amount so let's go ahead and let's take a look at what weapons are on these ships and then get an idea now that we know what the comparison is okay so we'll start with the Excelsior it's got a type 9 phaser it can fire 13 times for 20,000 it's a pretty reasonable weapon um, not not great but it's, it's enough to at least do something to capital class ships. And then when we get down to the Type 8 phaser, you know, it's got about half the firepower, slightly lower firing rate for 12 shots, 13,750. Um, if you've seen some of the other videos, I do want to know that there was a correction. I had um, done some poor calculations and it was up at 230,000 and I was never able to figure out why it was and I just went with it and I realized that I had made a mistake. Um, I'll have a video later on um, explaining what my mistake was in the correction but we won't see that video until later when I'll be talking about uh, the runabout. So anyways with that being said 165,000 it's it's okay it's not particularly great it's it's getting a little bit on the low side but at least it's better than the Hideki. And then obviously 910,000 Type 10 Phaser, 14 shots, 65,000. That's that's the big guns right there. So this is obviously outgunning the anything that the uh, Cardassians can deliver by a significant amount, almost twice. Now the Kelton, 
I mean, it's it's that's okay, but a standard Cardassian ships. Cardassians are pretty much using Galore, especially when you see them during the Dominion War. So the Federation is it's it just it's big guns. It's double double what anything that the uh, uh, Cardassians can do. Okay, so now we kind of have an idea. So obviously the Federation, the Type Nine and Type Eight. You know, they're, they're, uh, I, I would consider them to be a medium of offensive weapon. You know, the big guns, they're medium. They're not that great, but the Galaxy classes, the only thing that's using Type 10 phasers is going to just kick some ass. All right, so we know that it was a bloody war with the uh, Klingons in the Federation, even though it was really short, but the Federation took significant losses. Now, let's figure out why that is. So right off the bat, you know, I'm looking at the Volca class cruiser, 1,430,000. That's that's an enormous amount of firepower for a starship. Uh, the Bird of Prey, as small as they are, 520,000. That's that's a lot of firepower for a small ship. That's 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 just an incredible amount. Now, their older Katangas, if they have their original weaponry, it's not going to be much of anything. Now remember, this is looking at the Katanga. This is not a modified Katanga using the Lance Phaser. This is a standard Katanga. And they're, they're not going to be able to do much of anything. 56,250, it's pretty, it's pretty um, pathetic. So the Volca class cruiser is built around this giant gun. Being able to fire four times at 357,500. That's, that's a really, really powerful weapon. It can fire you know that's that's a, that's a really good first volley rate and that's a huge amount of damage now it could shoot a pulse too if it wanted to and the pulse could be up to 520,000 but if it's just shooting like a beam uh, the beam is you know less but it can fire more now we look at the clean bird of prey which is their main attack ship it has a volley of 20 shots at 26,000 so it's delivering a lot of damage so we know the cleaning birds of prey um, for a ship of its size, it's a it's a lot of firepower. It's equivalent to basically almost the Galore. Now the Katanga here is not using a lance phaser. Obviously, this is a standard Katanga, and the standard Katanga it's not bringing a whole lot to the battlefield. I mean, fifty six thousand two hundred fifty. That's pretty. It's pretty weak. But this sh this ship is uh, over a hundred years old. So fifteen shots at three thousand seven hundred fifty. It's not very impressive. Now. The Katanga that has been modified, um, they they can be hitting a lot. So the Lance Phaser that's seen on the Katanga, we I don't know exactly. We have no way of really estimating or knowing how powerful it is. So I would assume it's probably the same as the one that's on the Volca class cruiser. Just can't fire as much, but we really don't know because we don't ever see them actually fight anything. So there's no way to determine what it can and cannot do. But we can speculate it. But if you did modify, let's say, a Katanga, the same way that they've done with some of the other ships, then most likely they're probably using the disruptors that the Klingon Birds of Prey are using, which is the standard Klingon disruptor, which would be 26,000. It would be, um, you know, uh, it would still be, it would be a pretty good ship. Like, Katangas can hold out. They're pretty, they're pretty good. And they... They have six disruptors, and if they were all modernized, that, that's a lot of firepower. Alright, so looking at this, we can we can see why the Klingons were obviously able to just roll over the Cardassians. I mean, a bird of prey is a small ship, and it's basically taking on a Galore by itself. And then we know that the Cardassians, their best ship is half the firepower of a Klingon cruiser. So we definitely can see that the Klingons have a huge technological advantage in firepower over the Cardassians. I mean, even even the Cardassians' weakest ship is probably not going to be able to take on a Katanga, even a, 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 a regional Katanga. I know that the firepower-wise, it does look like that it could, but it realistically wouldn't be able to even take on a, a hundred year old Katanga. Now, when we look at this and then we compare what had happened with the 
Federation and the Klingon War, then things totally change. So when we look at this, yes, the Katanga can outgun a galaxy-class starship on the first Virage. And these ships, head-to-head, -to -head, they're, they're pretty similar. But when it comes down to how many starships have Type X phasers versus how many ships are armed with, you know, Volca class heavy clean on disruptors, you'll see there's a huge discrepancy. So there's not going to be that many clean on Volca class cruisers in the fleet. You know, that's a command ship. And then obviously there's a lot of cruisers and smaller ships and that can carry type 10 phasers. And we know the Federation also has a lot of backup starships like Excelsiors and Mirandas and they're using you know type 8 and type 9 and type 8 and type 9 they're still you know about half the firepower of what you get another you know clean on bird of prey but they're still in a ballpark where you can still do something so the Klingons were not able to just roll over the Federation because the Federation outguns them by a lot just by sheer numbers of actually heavier hitting ships you know, I would say something along, I, this is an estimation, but I think for every Volca class cruiser, there's probably four or five ships that have Type 10 phasers that are in the Federation fleet. The Federation fleet's larger, and for the most part, it's more advanced. Because a bird of prey, can, honestly, it, it brings a lot of firepower, and it's a dangerous ship, but I don't think a bird of prey can take on really any Federation starship that's a new generation. It could probably take on any kind of Miranda, no problem at all, and it might be able to damage an Excelsior, but it's still gonna lose to the Excelsior overall. The Excelsior, though it's, you know, big guns are not as good, it's still got quite a bit of tor torpedoes, and the ship, honestly, its defensive capabilities are much better than a bird of prey. So overall, it's kind of a good idea to can see like why the Klingons were able to roll over the Cardassians is because they really, really outgunned them. And then when it comes to the Federation, it was more of a stalemate. I mean, the Klingons are aggressive, and the Federation is not typically that aggressive. They're more of a defensive race, and the Klingons are obviously an offensive race. So they kind of counteract one another, but I really think that if it came out in a long, drawn-out war, that the Federation would just be able to draw out the fight long enough to just weaken the Klingons, where they're just going to have to stop. So we know that the Klingon Federation War is a small part, doesn't last, there's not a whole lot of information on it, but one of the things that we do see and one of the things we can notice is that the Klingons were perfectly capable of delivering huge amounts of damage using their vocal class cruisers. Now, their other ships are not going to be able to do that much to the Federation, and the Federation, when it comes ship to ship, it has far better ships and far more than the clean on counterparts so I think the clean on empire yes they get in there they kind of surprise you and they can do some serious damage but when it comes to a long drawn out sustained battle they don't do very well because once they start losing their vocal class cruisers then their ability to attack you goes significantly down so their vocal class cruisers the clean on empire is very dependent on them bringing that against larger ships they have a good decent number of them but it's not enough to counteract the federation's massive fleets now when we look at this i, I do think it's pretty interesting that the Volca class cruiser has so much firepower, which it makes sense to me. You know, it is a ship that's made by the Klingons, and the Klingons don't really care about anything but fighting in the Federation. That's not their primary source. And then the reason why I didn't use like the Nigvar or any of the Beta Cannon starships for the Cardassians or the Sovereign for the Federation is because those ships are extremely rare. And you wouldn't really see them on the front lines, and they're not really a good way to depict the strength value of the fleets by just their random one-off ships. And then with the Cardassians especially, we don't even know if the Cardassians really have any of those ships that we see in the games and stuff. Because none of those things are canon, and none of those things exist in the actual canon universe. So that's the reason I don't use them. There's something I want to talk about. So we do know that some of the uh, Katanga classes had the Lance phaser on it. 
can you imagine being a Galore captain and then a Katanga decloaks and then fires at you with its Lance Phaser? So based on the weapons power that ratio that we have there with the Lance Phaser, the Lance Phaser could bring down the frontal shield of a Galore and then hit its uh, disruptor or its spiral wave disruptor cannon. Can you imagine if you're a Cardassian officer, it decloaks, and you're like, oh, it's this Katanga, right? The first time they see a Katanga, right? That's been modified. And they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. We're going to beat the shit out of this crap ship. And then it hits you with the Lance Phaser and then blows out your shield, your frontal shield, and then hits your heavy spiral wave disruptor cannon. And then you're left with only your secondary weapons. And you know that your ship is completely effed. How embarrassing would that be that you got your ass kicked by a hundred year old ship? That is something I thought about would be really funny. If you like this content, please subscribe and tell your friends. If you're a fan of Star Trek, make a comment. It makes a difference. With that being said, thank you all for watching Trek Wars.